One of the big features of account abstraction is gas abstraction, and that's what I want to focus on this video. It's a big feature whether you're thinking of sponsoring the gas completely for your users or whether you're thinking about allowing them to pay in some other token than the native currency. Either way, it's a really big feature. And what's really cool about ZK Sync Era is one of the things that makes it special is that it has native account abstraction. And with native account abstraction, you can actually use paymasters as first class citizens, which means that the protocol knows about paymasters as a concept. It knows what a paymaster should look like. It knows the interface, what methods it can call on the paymaster. And that's what we're gonna see in this video. You can actually use a paymaster with an externally owned account on ZK Sync Era, which means that we can immediately start using uh, a paymaster to sponsor transactions, even for just an EOA. That's what we're gonna see in this video. It's a super cool use case and uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, hey, so let's get started. I'm a big believer in starting from scratch and learning by doing, so that's what we're going to be doing here. I have a VS Code instance that's just named ZK Paymaster, and so far inside of here there is nothing uh, inside of this folder, inside of this directory. Uh, but what I want to do with you is I want to create a smart contract that is going to be our paymaster. We're going to deploy that paymaster on ZK Sync Era Sepolia, and then we are going to interact with that to use the paymaster to sponsor gas for an EOA that we create here on this video. So let's go ahead and do all of those things. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna use the most low level tools that I dare use in order to make this happen. So those two big tools that we're gonna be using is a Solidity compiler for ZK Sync, which is a special version of the Solidity compiler, which we'll see in a moment. And then there's also a version of Ethers.js for ZK Sync as well, and we'll make use of that tool for deploying the paymaster as well as interacting with it through the EOA. So we'll go ahead and take a look at those two things as we get into those tools. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do here is I'm just gonna create some folders. I'm gonna create a folder called, uh, let's call it contracts, where I'm gonna store my contracts. And then I'm also gonna create a folder called artifacts where I'm gonna store my uh, compiler artifacts. When we compile our contract, that's where we're gonna store the things like our binaries and our, um, and our ABI for the uh, particular contracts. So we'll have like a contract in here that's gonna be like a paymaster and eventually we'll be able to uh, program this in to do something uh, interesting here. Okay, great. So what I need to get working first is I need to go get myself the ZK Sync Solidity compiler. Now this is a special version of the ZK Sync or uh, of the Solidity compiler. You'll find the differences between EVM and ZK EVM inside of the ZK documentation. It's going to tell you all the differences between Ethereum and ZK Sync era, and that's why we need a special Solidity compiler uh, that we're going to see here. If you want to use that at the low level, most of the time you don't need to. You could use something like ZK Sync Hardhat, which we're going to use in future videos. Uh, but here, what I'm going to do is. I'm actually going to pull it from uh, the ZK Soul C bin. So I'm actually going to go get the static binaries here and be able to use that. So if you ever need to go this low level and get the compiler yourself, you can find it here. Uh, me specifically, I'm going to be using this on macOS ARM. So I'm going to go in here and then you can find the latest version, I believe down here at the bottom, looks like the right one, 1.41. 1 so that's what I'm going to download here. So let me go ahead and grab the raw version of this and then we'll bring it on over into our VS Code instance. So let me get this one. Ooh, open it up. Right. Here we go. And we'll copy it on over into our folder. Okay, cool. So now we have the compiler inside of our project. Like I said, most of the time you won't have to do this, but it is helpful to see this at the low level so you know what's going on. You know that we're using a different version of the Solidity compiler than we normally would for uh, any other chain, right? So here we have uh, the ZKC uh, Sol C. And what I'm going to do is just to test that I can make this work properly, I'm going to go ahead and create a contract and then I'm going to go ahead and compile it to make sure that we can actually get those artifacts the way I would expect to be able to. So let's just create a contract C. I'm going to want like the pragma and the license. So maybe I can grab that uh, from one of these files over here, which we'll use in a second. I believe on the latest version of this compiler, we're actually at 8.25, but I could be wrong. We'll see if there's an error when I go to use the binaries here. Uh, but let's just go ahead and compile this with a public variable X. 
Uh, this way we'll see that the ABI contains this public variable X, and that way we know that we're actually compiling this contract C the way we would expect to. Great, so from my terminal, in order to make this happen, what I can do is I can key into my uh, my solidity binaries here, and I can go and actually it looks like I have all of this uh, set up properly where I have contracts paymaster.sol and I'm trying to spit it out into artifacts paymaster.json. I'm also telling it that I want to uh, bring this into JSON and I want to get the ABI in the binaries, right? The bytecode for this particular smart contract. So that's great. It's a good thing I use like the same <laughs> folder structure every time. So this is actually a good and working command. Uh, if you want to find these instructions, you can uh, take a look at the instructions for the Solidity compiler to see some of the flags that you can pass in or uh, look for in the help of the CLI. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Uh, so this might be something that you may run into as well if you download the static binaries right away, depending on your operating system and your setup here. Uh, but it's telling me permission denied to go ahead and execute this. What I can do here is I can go ahead and modify those permissions. And if I did do the uh, plus X here, I can go ahead and just start using that as a executable on my system. So now I can actually run this here. So let's, uh, so if that ran properly, what we should have is up here in my artifacts, I should have a contract and that contract should have some bytecode and it should also have an ABI that has a uh, variable X. And it looks like it's working. We have a view function that is going to return us a UN256. That's exactly what I was expecting. So it looks like we are compiling uh, using our ZK Sync Solidity compiler. Awesome, okay. So that's one thing out of the way. So that's the first tool that we're going to see specific to ZK Sync. Uh, the other one we're gonna see in a moment is ZK Sync Ethers, but I don't wanna get too far ahead because first we gotta build ourselves a paymaster. So this is not a paymaster here. This is a contract C. We need to make ourselves a paymaster. So let's do that. Uh, so in order to do that, let me first call this paymaster. And uh, what I am going to do next is I'm gonna go ahead and get the interface for a paymaster from uh, the ZK Sync contracts here. So you can actually find this if you go to Matter Labs error contracts on GitHub, you can go in here to the uh, system contracts, contracts interfaces, ipaymaster.sol. And here we're going to see uh, the interface for a paymaster. So let me go ahead and pull this over. And I'm going to create this in a specific file called ipaymaster.sol. And we'll go ahead and uh, put that in there. Then it's going to get mad at me because I also need this transaction helper. So I also believe I have that open here. So there's the transaction helper. I'm going to have to go searching for it. Uh, so I can pull this one on over as well. But you'll notice that it's also going to pull in ERC-20 contracts. It's going to pull in a whole bunch of other stuff that actually I don't really need for this video. Uh, because what I'm trying to do is try to make the most bare bones paymaster possible. The paymaster that I want to build here is going to be a paymaster that will sponsor any gas for any user, which is not what you would want to do, you know, necessarily when you're building a paymaster. But again, I'm just trying to show the flow so we can see what's going on at the low level. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. And so therefore, the only thing that I know that I need from this is going to be, if we take a look at this file for the ipaymaster, the only thing that I'm actually going to need that's not defined is this transaction struct. So this transaction struct right here, I believe is also used in this function here. This is the only thing that I need from the transaction helper to actually get this ipaymaster to compile. So that's what I'm gonna pull over. Uh, that way I don't have to pull in all the other files. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that transaction struct. Here it is right here. Uh, and I will pull that on in. So let's call this transaction.soul. And we'll have ourselves a transaction. And again, maybe we wanna put, you know, our license identifier, pragma, all that good stuff. And here we might wanna do, 8.25 and we're going to pull in transaction.sol. Great, okay, so now this should compile. One thing to note, uh, so this one is going to be the function that I'm going to want to call on my paymaster. It's called validate and pay uh, for paymaster transaction. Uh, so this is the one that the something called the bootloader is going to call. Now I mentioned in the intro that there's this idea that um, 
paymasters are first class citizens on ZK Sync era. And so what this means is that the protocol itself, the system knows about paymasters. It knows what paymasters should look like, right? This is the interface for paymasters. So it knows that if you have a paymaster that you deploy, you as a developer, you could put this paymaster out here. The system knows how to interact with it. And how to interact with it is it's going to call this function validate and pay for paymaster transaction. And it's going to do that through something called the bootloader. The bootloader is a system contract that is most easily thought of as being similar to the entry point in ERC-4337 account abstraction. So if you followed our previous videos on account abstraction, you may already be familiar with this idea of the entry point. Uh, basically, you can think of it as something that's making it uh, possible to facilitate the account abstraction uh, protocol here. So the entry point in 4337 will make sure that the bundler is paid back for gas that it spends. Uh, in this case, the bootloader can actually be part of the system. So it knows that there's something like a uh, paymaster already out there. So it's going to have different logic than the entry point, but it's easy to think of it as pretty analogous there. So awesome. So that's the bootloader. You can think of it like the entry point. It's going to be something that is going to interact with our paymasters, interact with our accounts. In this case, we're just going to use an EOA. So, okay, that's all I wanted to take from the notes here. Uh, this transaction is going to be something that we're going to want to use. And then this magic value is something that we're going to return to say, hey, yes, we're willing to sponsor this transaction. So if we agree to sponsor the transaction, we're going to want to return that magic value. Uh, otherwise, this is all I really need to get this to work. So I'm going to take everything else out there. This post transaction function is actually an optional one. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to implement this one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out so that in my paymaster, I'm not going to implement it because again, I'm going to try to make things as bare bones as possible and we'll pull over this function right here and then we'll be able to get this magic value as well inside of our paymaster. So I'm going to say paymaster is I paymaster and we are going to go ahead and import the I paymaster dot soul. Great. Uh, and then we're going to make this function, right? And this function, there's a couple important things. It's going to return uh, for the magic, this magic right here. <laughs> it's returning the selector, but I like the name magic. Uh, and then the con context is going to just be uh, blank. We're not gonna supply any context here. This context gets supplied to the post operation, I believe is the only place that's really uh, used. And in this case, we don't even have the post operation. I took that function out. So I'm just gonna um, do no context. And um, cool. Okay, so now it's complaining that I'm not using these arguments, but I am definitely gonna at least use this transaction here. So I'm gonna take these other two things out. I'm not gonna use them here, but you would if you were implementing a production paymaster. I'm just gonna make use of the transaction. Okay, so there's a couple things that we need to do for a paymaster. So a paymaster, what it's willing to do is it's willing to sponsor transactions for a user. And when it says that I'm willing to sponsor a transaction for a user, it returns this paymaster validation success magic, right? That's what we're doing already. So what it needs to do to sponsor the gas for a user is it actually needs to pay the bootloader. So it needs to send to the bootloader the funds in order to pay for a transaction. What that means is the paymaster first has to have some funds. So one thing I don't wanna forget in here is that if the paymaster is going to have some funds, we need a function that is going to be able to accept those funds. So we need a receive function or something that can accept those funds where we can send it uh, the native currency, the ether here, right? So we wanna make sure to program that in there before I forget, because I'm liable to forget and then we run into a bad error message later on in the video. but. Uh, cool. So that's in there. Uh, the other thing that we're going to need to do is once we have the ether in the, the paymaster is once we decide that we are going to sponsor the transaction, which we are going to do in every case in this uh, particular instance, what we are going to do is we're going to have to pay the, um, the bootloader. So for now, okay, the bootloader is going to be a particular address. Now, if you want to know the addresses of the system contracts, bootloader is one of these system contracts. It's a contract that is uh, baked into the protocol itself, uh, but it's something that you can interact with from your smart contracts. So you can learn more about uh, these system contracts. You would see in the GitHub that I was looking at, there's a bunch of system contracts in there. Uh, we'll interact with a few more later on in future videos. 
But for now, uh, the bootloader is one system contract that we're going to interact with. If you wanna learn more about that, go to the ZK Sync developer docs and just search system contracts. It'll tell you all about them. Uh, so these are sort of contracts that are baked into the protocol and the bootloader is one of these. It does have a, an address. So an address that we can sort of refer to it and we can send ether to it. And that address uh, we can actually look up. So I did leave this up here to be able to look it up. Um, so the bootloader address here is going to be, there's a system contracts offset. So there's an offset to make sure uh, we can look up over here what that is. It's saying that uh, they have these this offset. The idea is that uh, it's trying to avoid any collision with Ethereum precompiles. So you might have some precompiles that are different um, procedures, things that you can run that are baked into the protocol itself that over time Ethereum might install more precompiles. So you need to have an offset to make sure that you're not going to collide with any of the addresses of these precompiles. Um, things like, you know, uh, elliptic curve recovery mechanisms, things like that, right? So we want to make sure that we are not going to collide with these things. Uh, so there's an offset already here, which is two to the 15. Uh, and then we're going to add one to that. And that is going to be our bootloader formal address. Now, I just happen to know that two to the 15 in hexadecimal is this. 0x80000. I did that before. I know what it is. It's easy to remember, so it's on the top of my head. Uh, that makes it quite easy because now we know that the address of the bootloader is just going to be address 8000 plus 1. Uh, so it's going to be that. That's the address of the bootloader. And by uh, converting this to an address, we're just going to uh, put zeros in front of there, right, to fill out this to the entirety of an address space. Okay. Cool. So that is going to be our bootloader address. So what we're going to want to do with the bootloader is we're going to want to pay the bootloader some amount. So we're going to want to call the bootloader and send it some value, which is going to be the amount that it expects us to pay for the user's transaction in this case. So we need to figure out what that amount is going to be. And then this is going to return, you know, some success and uh, we'll require that that is successful. And uh, now we need to figure out what that value is going to be. So let's go ahead and do that. The other thing we might want to do here while I'm thinking about it is just require that the only person who can call this is the bootloader. So the bootloader, when it calls this uh, contract here, it actually does manipulate the message sender to say that this is coming from the bootloader's address as well. Uh, so we can say require that the bootloader is the message sender here and um, we can go ahead and use that. Great. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the value. Now for the value, what we can do here is we can actually calculate this out of the transaction. The transaction here is going to have baked into it the things that we need in order to calculate that. So uh, the, uh, the, the payback value is going to be something like transaction, uh, let's see, max fee per gas times the gas limit. Cool. And that should do it. That's going to be our payback value. So whatever we're willing to pay per gas uh, times the gas limit is going to be what we're going to pay. So we're going to go ahead and send that on over. And then if that works properly, then we should sponsor the gas for our EOA. So that should be our paymaster uh, in full. Now what we want to do is we want to actually deploy that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and create a script where we're going to make use of ZK sync ethers and be able to uh, deploy this. So here is our scripts folder. Let's call it scripts. And in here, I'm going to create a deploy.js. And um, so for this, I'm going to use, so let me make sure I save this file because that was bothering me. For this, I'm going to make sure to use uh, ZK sync ethers. So I'm going to create a new package.json down here, mp init y. Uh, so that's going to create a new package JSON, and to this package JSON, I'm going to install zk sync ethers. So you can find this up here on npm. Uh, we could just go ahead and install it like this. Copy that down, install it, and now we have it installed in our package JSON, so we can make use of it in our deploy.js. Now there's some documentation on here on how to use this, so I would definitely make use of that. You can use the uh, default provider here. And of course, if you want to use, uh, if you want to make this scalable, you can go out and use uh, the Alchemy RPC URL as well. Uh, definitely, if you're going to use this for any production use case, you want to go out and grab that RPC 
URL from your project inside of the Alchemy dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and make use of this code right here. And I don't need this. Don't think I need utils for now. But we have ourselves a provider and this is going to be Network Sepolia. Now you'll notice that inside of the, um, the documentation here, I did not take this piece, this, this line right here. This line right here is actually referring to the Sepolia for Ethereum L1, uh, where I am only going to be interacting with the L2. These examples actually show you how to do things like transfer over from the L1 to the L2 and vice versa. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that in this example. I'm only going to be interacting with the L2. So that's the only provider that I'm going to be using here. Uh, so that's just something to note. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a new wallet with a private key and um, passing in that L2 provider. Great. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to create a private key. For this private key, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, generate it in front of you. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into Node. And then I am going to require crypto is a core node library. And then we'll say random bytes 32 to hex or two string hex. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So private key, you saw me generate it in front of you. So you know that this is a brand new uh, private key. But in case you're not convinced, we can go ahead and take a look at the balance of this private key. Uh, to make sure that there's no balance in there right now. And then I'm going to want to add some balance to it so that we can actually deploy this paymaster uh, so we can get started. So let's go ahead and first just log out that uh, wallet balance. Wallet dot balance. Uh, what is it? Wallet dot get balance. Hmm. Why is that not? Uh, wallet is okay. Well, there should be a get balance method on there. Maybe I did something wrong, but I'm not seeing it right now. Let's go ahead and just log out wallet.getBalance and see if that works. So I'm gonna say, let me clear this so I can bring this up. And I'm gonna go ahead and say node scripts deploy. Oh, you know what I didn't do? That's why I didn't grab wallet from here. I'm surprised it wasn't yelling at me inside of the uh, code there. So now wallet should have that method get balance coming up on autocomplete. There we go. Okay, now I feel secure. Okay, great. Uh, and now I can actually run that uh, deploy and it should be pointing at ZK Sync era Sepolia. So we should see uh, the balance that we have there, which is zero because we just created this private key. Uh, so, okay, one thing to watch out for is you can change the type module in your package JSON. So you could use these imports or in uh, Node.js, we could just use const require. Fortunately, JavaScript has this long like history of how it imports modules uh, that <laughs> carries forward with us to, to today. So sometimes you run into that. Uh, okay, and then the provider here, we are not passing in the second provider. We're only gonna be passing in the L2 provider here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And there is our balance, it's zero. Okay, great. So now that we have the balance of zero, we wanna actually send over some balance so that we can actually deploy the uh, paymaster here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to uh, MetaMask and I'm going to send over some testnet ether on ZK Sync Sepolia. What I need to know is actually what is the address of the wallet and that is not an asynchronous uh, thing. So I don't need to put it in my sync iffy. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask for that address. There's a brand new address and we're going to send over some ZK Sync Era Sepolia uh, testnet funds. Okay, let's see. We are on ZK Sync Sepolia and we'll send this through and we're gonna do 0 0.1. That should be plenty. I don't know, 0 0.2. I don't know why I feel like 0 0.1 might not be, a, <laughs> 0 0.01 might not be enough, but 0 0.02 might. Uh, we'll see. Uh, if we need to, we could send some more. I got more than that. <laughs> so hopefully enough to be able to do all these things. All right, great. So we'll send that through. Give it a second. And hopefully now we should have some new funds in there. Okay, there's our funds. Awesome. So everything is working there. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to actually deploy this. So if we deploy this, the way that we can do that is if you're familiar with ethers, uh, you, you're familiar with this concept of a contract factory, most likely. So the idea of a contract factory is it's a um, 
it's a, a way to be able to create new contracts, right? So what we could pl uh, provide to a contract factory is going to be, we're gonna say new contract factory, and then we could provide ABI uh, bytecode, and then the runner here is actually going to be our wallet. So that's, um, you know, it's gonna know how to interact with the, uh, the particular network, and then it's also going to know how to sign for the transaction. So the contract factory is gonna be smart enough to know I have an address that is going to pay for this uh, particular deployment and I know where to send that transaction to. Uh, so now it's as smart as it needs to be to be able to do that deployment. Uh, the only trouble is that the ABI in the bytecode here is not something that I filled out, uh, but we already do have that. We have that in the artifacts over here, right? One thing I didn't do is I didn't recompile this paymaster since uh, we have that original contract C. So at this point, I'm gonna wanna recompile it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just rerun this here and hopefully that's gonna come out with the latest paymaster. It doesn't look like it errored. So I think that's good. That looks pretty big and scary. So I think we did what we needed to do. Uh, so in my deploy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull, uh, let's call this like, paymaster json is require and then we should be able to go to artifacts and then paymaster json like that right and then hopefully if this is working okay we should be able to pull out of our paymaster json the I abi and it's going to come out as bin for binaries paymaster json and then dot contracts um Normally, if that's working, it actually gives me an autocomplete. So now I'm a little bit skeptical. Oh, dot, dot, dot. There it is. Okay, sweet. Dot, 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 artifacts. Now it should give me an autocomplete contracts. And then, okay, so it's giving me two options here. Oops, sorry. Two options, the paymaster and the ipaymaster. It compiled both. We want to get the paymaster. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. So we have the ABI and the bin, which is actually going to be the bytecode. So I'm just going to rename that to bytecode there. Uh, and then we have everything we need to create the contract factory. We have a wallet that's full of gas. We have the bytecode. We have the ABI to interact with the, um, the paymaster. So we are good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, cf.deploy. And this always returns something that I don't know how to name it. So sometimes I just name it result. It returns a promise that then you could call uh, like some sort of a wait function on it. So I never know what to call that. So we'll call it results. And then we could say, um, I think this returns a contract. We could say result dot wait for deployment. So, okay, it's getting mad at me because this should be in a wait right here. And then we're also going to want to wait for that. And then the result of the wait for deployment should be a contract. So it's saying promise this, we're inside of the contract.ts. So it looks like it's resolving to a contract at the end of the day, uh, and that's what I want. So uh, the contract, we can say await contract dot get address. And if that is working the way we expect it to, then we should get an address for the contract, the paymaster contract address, which is what we want at the end of the day. So that should be everything we need. So if this is working properly and we gave it enough gas, then uh, we are good to go. Let's go ahead and deploy ourselves a paymaster. We'll say node scripts deploy.js. And we'll go ahead and see if that deploys the way we expect it to. Uh, no, okay. It's saying insufficient funds. Uh, hmm, okay. Balance is that, but it says that there should be more. So I don't know. Uh, Look at that fee. That fee looks like barely more than what it is. I don't know if you could see that. My, uh, depending on the where I am, <laughs> that might be blocking. Let me. Uh, so this is the fee right here. So um, I just may need to give it some more gas, or I could try again, right? Maybe the um, the test net, spolio test net, was uh, particularly in use at that moment. All right, I'll send it more gas. All right, here we go. We'll send it more. Uh, so we have this address over here for the paymaster, which was up over here. I knew that 0 0.01 wasn't going to be enough, but I was wrong that 0 0.02 would be enough. I thought it would be. Where's our... Um, right, I need to send it through to our wallet address. And where's our wallet address? I uh, lost it in here. Okay, let's log out the wallet address again. So we're gonna say console.log wallet address. 
and we're going to log that out. There it is. Okay, cool. So I'll resend some more over here and we'll do another 0 0.02 just to be sure. We need to save some funds for being able to use it for the paymaster because we got to load up the paymaster so it can sponsor the gas. So let's go ahead and send that 0 0.02 over to the account and uh, then we'll come back on over. And hopefully now we should have enough to be able to deploy that. There's the wallet address again. And it looks like it's thinking now, so that's good. Okay, here's our paymaster address, awesome. So now we have the paymaster address. Let's go ahead and just create a new script. That's gonna be called uh, gassponsor.js. And for the gas sponsor, one thing that we'll definitely need is the paymaster address, which is gonna be this. So now we have a paymaster deployed somewhere. Uh, if we wanted to test this, we could pull up the ZK Sync era Sepulia um, block explorer. And there it is. So we're on Sepulia. You could also switch right to mainnet on here. And uh, we could go look up this address and hopefully it should have some contract code in there. Uh, great. Okay. So it looks like we deployed the paymaster successfully, uh, hopefully. So. Now what we're going to do is we are going to interact with the paymaster and we're going to go ahead and sponsor some gas for an EOA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over from this just a few things. So let's pull over. Yeah, let's pull over all of this and then I'll take what I need. So I'm not going to need for the paymaster. I'm not going to need the ABI and the bytecode. Uh, this time because um, we're actually going to be encoding on the transaction paymaster params and it actually gets encoded on the transaction itself as additional parameters at the end of the serialized transaction. So we don't need to call out to a paymaster. The reason being is that the bootloader, which is a system contract, knows how to interact with a paymaster, right? That's that native account abstraction. So we don't need the ABI in this case. So we don't need the, the JSON there. Uh, we just need to know the address of the paymaster and we're going to encode that on the transaction itself. Great. Uh, we're not gonna need a contract factory and we'll just keep everything else in there. So uh, I'm gonna move this paymaster address a little bit up. The one thing that I am going to do is I'm gonna create a new wallet and uh, we could just change a few of these values, right? So I'm gonna do like 31, I'm gonna change that to 58. And that's gonna create a new wallet address that's gonna have no uh, balance inside of it. And just to prove that to you, this is important, right? Because we wanna be able to sponsor the gas for this particular wallet address. So I wanna to prove to you first that there is no balance inside of that wallet. So let's just go ahead and do await wallet.getBalance. It's gonna be a brand new address that has no ether to be able to uh, pay for its actual gas, right? Because we're gonna sponsor that with the paymaster that we just deployed. Uh, so let's go ahead and clear this out. We're gonna run node script slash gas sponsor. JS. All right, sweet. There's a new wallet address. There it is. Zero balance. You believe me? Uh, we can even go look it up on the block explorer, right? If we go look this up, brand new address, no transactions, no balance. Um, cool. So that is uh, what we need to do there. We, we created a new wallet. This wallet now, we're actually going to send a transaction with this. And now again, because this is native, you know, account abstraction, what we're actually going to use is this native wallet.send transaction. Uh, so this is actually going to send a, a raw transaction to a, a node somewhere, right? And on this raw transaction is actually going to be the paymaster parameters and the protocol knows how to deal with those paymaster parameters. We're gonna have to use uh, an additional utility from ZK Sync Ethers in order to get those paymaster parameters and put those on there properly. Uh, but besides that, it is basically what you would do for a traditional transaction, right? Which is really nice for account abstraction. Typically you have to involve a few other things and it's a little trickier, especially ERC-4337. Uh, so this is really, really cool. So what we'll do is we'll send this transaction. Um, what do we wanna do with the transaction? We might want to uh, send it somewhere to a particular address. Uh, we'll just go find an address that we can send it to for the data. We'll just send like something, you know, this address, I wanna keep it so that there's no funds on this address, so I'm not gonna send any value, but we'll see the data is 0x1337, so we know the transaction worked properly, uh, and then we'll send it to an address somewhere. So 
This is the paymaster address. It shouldn't have a neighbor. So I'll just send it to uh, C4 right next to it. And this should be a brand new address. And again, I'll prove that to you. Uh, so if we go over here, you know, there's nothing over there. Not that it would matter in this case, but we're just gonna send some uh, you know, data over to this blank address. There's no contract code there to interact with the call data, so great. Uh, okay, so that's sending the transaction. Now what we need to do is we need to do this thing where you can pass in custom data. And if you ever need to know what this custom data can involve, you can click in here and you could go see what's inside here. The thing that we care about for this particular case is the paymaster params. So for the paymaster params, there's actually a utility that we can use uh, to get those paymaster params. So we're gonna go ahead and get them. So to get the paymaster params, we'll call it paymaster params, is going to be get paymaster params. It's a well-named <laughs> method, right? Uh, nothing surprising there. Uh, it is a little bit tricky what the paymaster params expect. Uh, there's a couple of, there's um, a couple of different ways that you can send the, the paymaster params. So there's the general and the approval base for like a token. If you wanted to do uh, a token flow where your users are paying for uh, the gas with a ERC20 token. In this case, I'm not gonna be doing that. So I'm just gonna be using the general and we're not sending any inner input. So we're just doing a blank byte array here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take basically exactly this and copy it on over. So let's do that. So we need to get rid of these little asterisks. And then we have the paymaster address, which I shortened. And then it's type general. And yeah, that should be it. So we can pass those paymaster params on the wallet send transaction. Pretty painless, right? Uh, we had to use an additional utility, but then it gets put on the, that main transaction right there, right? And then we target this paymaster here at the end of the day. Okay, awesome. So again, this wallet does not have any balance on it. So, you know, there's nothing that we should, uh, you know, there's, there's no way that it could pay for the gas, but the paymaster can, right? So the paymaster is going to pay for the gas. So what we want to do here is we want to get the, the transaction back from wallet.send transaction and we'll log it out and we'll see what it says. We'll see if it's successful. Uh, tell you the truth, I know that this is going to fail. I wonder if you can think of why. Why is this going to fail? Why is this gas sponsorship not going to work right now? I wanna see the error that pops up. Think about it. All right, maybe you got it, let's see. So it's saying, uh, okay, that's actually not what I expected. <laughs> but this one's always a painful one. It's saying, uh, bad address checksum and that is um, so <laughs> so there's there's address checksums right to make sure that you don't mistype a address and because I just took the the paymaster address right here and I changed it from c3 to c4 uh, that messed up the uh, the address checksum so if I want to actually get the proper address checksum I could plug this in over here and this is going to have the checksum right here so the checksum is um, is actually like an algorithm built into the casing of the letters inside of your address here that can um, it, it, basically it it tells uh, a you know a protocol or anyone who's actually running that algorithm for the checksum that uh, this person actually encoded the correct checksum so ideally it's supposed to stop typos uh, that sort of thing so um, you know, in this case, it caught the fact that I was just changing over that number slightly. But you can see that the C here got uh, lowercase uh, before it was uppercase, so that sort of thing. So there's the invalid checksum. That is not the error that I was expecting. But let's go ahead and run this and see the error that I was expecting, maybe. Uh, okay, so it's saying paymaster validation error. And it's not giving me a very good error. Uh, and that might just be because of the way that I encoded the paymaster to just fail uh, when the call is not successful to the bootloader sending over that value. But if this is where it fails, you know, if we're trying to send value over to the bootloader and it's failing right here, why do you think that is? Well, it's because we never funded our paymaster, right? The paymaster doesn't have any funds to actually pay the bootloader back for the, uh, for the transaction mass fee for gas times the gas limit. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fund the paymaster. And we know the paymaster's address, so we're going to have to send over those funds. This should be a smaller amount because it's a transaction, not a uh, deployment of a contract. So we should be able to send over 0 0.01, and that should be plenty. Uh, so I'll send that over to the paymaster. 
and then if that is good, then we should be able to deploy this now. And again, this address, this wallet address doesn't have any funds in it. And just to prove that, um, because I wanna make sure that I didn't accidentally put it in there, we could say wallet balance, and we'll see that as it's going through, this wallet is gonna have no balance and the paymaster is going to go ahead and sponsor this transaction for that wallet. So let's go ahead and see that happen. Let's say gas sponsor. So you see there's no balance down here and then looks like a valid transaction response. So here is the hash. Let's go take a look and see if that worked. So here is the response. And there's the 1337, right? So we sent that over properly. And then we see that the, the fee was paid for by the paymaster. And is that the paymaster that we expect there, 41C3? Yes, that's the one. Uh, so our paymaster succeeded in paying for the transaction for us. Now what we could do is we could go to this address here now and we could actually watch the paymaster pay for a bunch of its transactions, right? That might be kind of fun. So we could actually send over uh, Leet to this uh, random address uh, many, many times. So the balance is still gonna be zero every time and we should still get a successful transaction. So let's go ahead and sponsor the gas again. Uh, so zero, we still have no funds in there. Let's do it again. Uh, just keep having the paymaster sponsor gas for us. And one more time, why not? So we'll do it four times. And there you go, right? Uh, let's go ahead and see on the Block Explorer. And we have four gas sponsored transactions for our address that has no funds inside of it. So we did everything that we intended to do in this video. We got to see uh, ZK Sync, the Solidity compiler version of ZK Sync, uh, the ZK Sync version of the Solidity compiler. We also got to see uh, the ZK Sync version of Ethers JS. Uh, so we got to see these tools on a pretty low level. In future videos, we're gonna be doing things more with like ZK Sync Hard Hat, which is gonna abstract a little bit of this away from you, but hopefully this was super helpful uh, so that when you actually go to use the Paymaster and stuff a little bit later, there's no mysteries. There's no sort of like ambiguity for how this is working down at the lower level. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and look forward to uh, the next few videos on ZK Sync.